Imagine waking up one morning to find your email inbox flooded with messages from unfamiliar sources, your bank account emptied, and your social media profiles hacked. It sounds like a plot from a thriller movie, doesn't it? But in today's hyperconnected world, this nightmare scenario is increasingly becoming a reality for many people. Think about the last time you heard about a major data breach or a hacking incident affecting a company or a government agency. Perhaps you've even received a notification from a service you use, warning you to change your password due to a security breach. These incidents are no longer rare occurrences reserved for tech experts or high-profile targets. They are happening with alarming frequency to everyday individuals like you and me. Cybercrimes, ranging from identity theft and financial fraud to corporate espionage and ransomware attacks, are on the rise. The digital age has brought unprecedented convenience and connectivity, but it has also opened the door to new forms of crime that can be perpetrated from anywhere in the world with just a laptop and an internet connection. But before that, we need to know, why are these cybercrimes becoming so normalized? What are the factors contributing to their prevalence? Let's delve deeper into this evolving landscape of digital threats and explore how they are reshaping our understanding of security in the 21st century. But before moving further, we have something special for you. If you want to learn hacking and other major tactics related to cybersecurity, you should definitely enroll in our Cybersecurity Masters program, where you will get more than 150 hours of live training directly from industry experts with 24-7 access to world's biggest virtual labs. Apart from this, even if you want to make career in in-demand IT field and want to land a good package, we have master's programs for them too. Enroll now, link is in the description. Now let's continue. Firstly, cybercrimes are addressed under the Information Technology Act, commonly known as the IT Act 2000. It's important to be aware of key sections when reporting cyber threats or attacks. Section 65 covers tampering with computer source documents, which includes any data originating from a computer like music files or documents stored on devices such as pen drives or floppy disks. Moving on to Section 66, hacking involves unauthorized access to computer systems or networks. Even if it's a colleague's PC that's locked while they're away, Accessing it without their consent can be seen as hacking and is against the law. According to the IT Act, such actions can lead to legal consequences. Moving forward, Section 66 d deals with identity theft using passwords, digital signatures, or biometric data like thumb impressions. Misusing someone's password or digital signature, particularly for sensitive tasks like income tax filings, constitutes a criminal offense. Now, let's talk about motives behind cyber attacks. The primary motive is financial gain. Hackers often target systems to make money, whether ethically or unethically. The second motive could be political, especially during elections when social media platforms witness controversies involving political parties hiring hackers to gain advantage. Everyone desires recognition, whether it's seeing their picture on the front page or having their achievements acknowledged in the media. Recognition can take two forms, positive, like being hailed as a skilled hacker who protected a company, or negative, such as being labeled the fraud of the year. The type of recognition you receive depends entirely on your actions. Corporate espionage, a critical concern, involves targeting businesses to gain an unfair advantage. Imagine a scenario where a newcomer in the solar panel industry attempts to steal customer data from an established competitor. This stolen data, emails, phone numbers, names, allows them to target the same clients without the years of effort spent on marketing and client acquisition. Insider threats pose another significant risk. These are situations where someone within an organization leaks sensitive information to external parties, potentially harming the company's interests. Such breaches are often more damaging than external attacks because insiders have access to confidential data. Lastly, state actors engage in cyber warfare, where nations employ hackers to disrupt each other's infrastructure, including vital systems like oil refineries controlled by Internet of Things, IoT, devices. Hacking these systems could lead to catastrophic consequences, demonstrating the severe impact cyber threats can have beyond traditional warfare. In summary, cybersecurity isn't just about protecting data. It's safeguarding against threats that can manipulate information, disrupt operations, and cause real-world harm. Let's discuss the various types of cyber attacks, each presenting unique threats to digital security. One of the most prevalent is malware, encompassing viruses, worms, trojans, and rootkits, malicious code that infiltrates a victim's PC to gain unauthorized access or control. Another common attack vector is password attacks. Contrary to popular belief, 
the most frequent method isn't brute forcing but rather password guessing. This technique involves trying to deduce or use commonly used passwords, similar to how children might try to guess a sibling's phone code. In professional contexts, even white box penetration testers resort to password guessing alongside brute forcing and dictionary attacks. In the latter, attackers use specialized tools to generate custom word lists tailored to the target application, aiming to crack passwords efficiently. These methods underscore the diverse and persistent threats faced in cybersecurity today. A hacker is someone who uses their skills in computer networking and technology to solve complex problems. Contrary to popular belief, not all hackers are malicious. There are three main types, white hat hackers, gray hat hackers, and black hat hackers. White hat hackers are ethical hackers who test systems and networks to identify vulnerabilities and report them to the respective companies to improve security. They are like cybersecurity professionals working for the greater good. Gray hat hackers fall somewhere in between, they may engage in both ethical and unethical activities depending on the situation. If they see more benefit in doing good, they lean towards ethical hacking. If tempted otherwise, they might exploit vulnerabilities for personal gain. Black hat hackers are the most malicious. They engage in illegal activities such as hacking for ransom, breaking into secure systems, and causing harm. They operate outside the bounds of the law and are considered dangerous. Now, let's delve into the core principles of cybersecurity, known as the CIA triad, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Confidentiality ensures that information is shared only with authorized individuals and remains private. For example, when sending a sensitive file, confidentiality means ensuring it isn't shared with unauthorized parties. Integrity is crucial as it guarantees that data remains accurate and unaltered during transmission. For instance, if you send a message saying, hi, it should not change to buy by the time it reaches the recipient. Techniques like checksums verify data integrity by detecting any changes or errors. Availability ensures that information is accessible to authorized users when needed. This principle ensures that systems are reliable and functional, providing timely access to information. Moving on to the stages of hacking, there are five primary stages with an additional reporting stage for penetration testers working within companies. The first stage is reconnaissance, where hackers gather information about their target. This involves understanding the structure and potential vulnerabilities of the target system. Next, hackers conduct scanning to identify specific weaknesses or entry points, often focusing on IP addresses or websites. Once vulnerabilities are identified, hackers attempt to gain access to the system. Once inside, they work to maintain their access, ensuring continued control for further actions. After completing their objectives, hackers must cover their tracks to avoid detection. Finally, for ethical hackers working in cybersecurity, there is a sixth stage where they prepare a detailed report for the company, outlining how they penetrated the system, the vulnerabilities found, and recommendations for improvement. Understanding these concepts provides insight into the complexities of cybersecurity and the roles hackers play within this dynamic field. Moving on, what are the types of footprinting? There are two main types, active and passive footprinting. Footprinting, also known as reconnaissance, involves gathering information about a target. Passive footprinting uses search engines like Google, Bing, or Yahoo to gather insights without directly interacting. On the other hand, active footprinting involves direct interaction with the target. In information gathering, we collect details such as domain names, subdomains, emails, and usernames. Scanning, however, involves probing specific IP addresses to identify services running, ports open, and potential vulnerabilities. The key difference is that in passive footprinting, we avoid direct interaction, whereas in active footprinting, we engage directly with the target system. Methods for footprinting include Google dorking, which uses advanced search techniques to refine queries. For instance, by specifying file types like PDFs, we can narrow down search results to obtain targeted information. This method is powerful but can also be risky. The Google Hacking Database compiles various search queries that can uncover sensitive data, such as unprotected webcams, highlighting vulnerabilities that require security attention. For example, Accessing live webcams without proper security measures can lead to serious privacy breaches. Imagine a scenario where someone can remotely monitor activities using compromised webcams. This underscores the importance of securing digital devices, including IoT devices, to prevent unauthorized access. Another method is reverse image search, exemplified by tools like Google Lens, which helps identify products and their prices by scanning images. This technique aids in comparison shopping and identifying counterfeit goods. In summary, footprinting involves meticulous data gathering through both passive and active means, 
leveraging advanced search techniques to uncover vulnerabilities and sensitive information. Understanding these methods is crucial for implementing robust cybersecurity measures and safeguarding against potential threats. When hackers conduct scanning, their primary objective is to identify the operating system, OS, running on each IP address. They understand that Linux commands won't function on Windows and vice versa. After gaining access to a system, they clarify that there's no graphical user interface. Only terminal access is available, emphasizing the need to determine the OS to use the correct commands. The scanning process also involves discovering ports and services to determine which services are active on which ports. Methods for gaining access include social engineering tactics, where hackers might impersonate someone familiar to gain entry into a company's premises. Another method is sophisticated penetration, involving exploiting vulnerabilities in websites or launching insider attacks. Once access is obtained, hackers maintain it through various means like creating backdoors or escalating privileges to gain admin slash root access. They also prioritize maintaining stealth, which involves hiding their actions. A vivid example shared is when someone manipulated a school computer, installing a malicious EXE file and using their mobile with Kali Linux to gain remote access via a shell, maintaining access cleverly even after school hours through a customized rootkit that reconnected upon the PC's use of Chrome. Additionally, hackers might install spyware on PCs to control devices remotely, accessing microphones and webcams. This strategy isn't limited to PCs. Incidents have involved hacking into smart TVs with built-in webcams, highlighting the privacy risks associated with such devices. These examples illustrate the complexity and various methods involved in hacking, emphasizing both technical prowess and strategic thinking to maintain access and avoid detection.